Yeah, I think that it's incredibly frustrating. I think I feel the frustration of the players, the, the, the disappointment of the supporters. Whilst there's much to be proud or positive about, we, we want to win games. And to be put ourselves in position to win the games, but not convert them. And um, these are you know, challenging days right now. The, the development days for us, the, 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 it's painful. We will work through this, and we will ensure that we are a better team coming out of it. It's becoming a theme, isn't it? But getting yourselves into a position to win the games, but then falling off. How do you explain that, and how do you fix it? Well, I think firstly we're. we're the, the, over the last period of time, the, the, the tests down in New Zealand, the, the, the tests you were playing against, very, very good teams. And you have to credit them. And I think it's important here to, to recognise just how good South Africa are. Um, double world champions, the consistency and, and the experience they have within their team means you have to be on the money every second of the, of the, of the test match. And... What we saw clearly was, particularly in that last part, we had plenty of entries in their 22, we had plenty of opportunities to score. And there were just small moments, small lapses, that in the magnitude of the game end up being hugely significant. And that's, that's what we're working through. And that's what we're working with the players to develop um, to ensure we are the team where I think that this team can go in the next few years. It is five defeats in a row. What would you say to England rugby fans who maybe aren't seeing progress and aren't patient? Well, I think that um, the, the most impatient people are, uh, are without question us that are in the team. We, we are with the team. We want we want you know, the players and coaches and all management. We want the, everything to happen now. Um, I think as you look at it, the transition of this team, if you can simply just compare the two teams, they had, I think, 15 players who were in the... The, the semi-final a year ago and they've they've obviously kept that team very much together our team we had a number of players finish after the World Cup and this last year has been um, one of transitioning a lot of young players into this England team which I think have an incredibly exciting future and it, it's it's a transition in the way we're trying to play also um, you can see when the, the team moves the ball you see just the talent that we have and the pace that we have, what I would do is make sure that we make all those moments count. Time isn't something that's always afforded in professional sport. Are you confident you will be given time to turn these good performances into wins? I'm very confident that we are on the right path and I'm very confident that I'm working with a great group of coaches, a great group of players. I'm very confident that we will be on a trajectory where that we're moving along. We want things to happen now. It's not happened now. Um, we aim to put in a, a better performance next week against Japan um, when we're back here next Sunday. Have you been given guarantees in that respect that it's a longer-term project and you'll get that time? Yeah, I'm not, as ever, I'm not going to be talking about private conversations with you here. What I, and I think what's actually more important is the feeling I get. And the feeling I get from the RFU is one of absolute support an absolute belief that this team is going in the right direction. And that's the feeling I get from everybody at the RFU. Jamie, do you feel the team's going in the right direction? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think, you know, like Steve elaborated too, like we, of course we are disappointed with the results. I think um, we wanted to give the England fans three wins from three. Of course we did. Um, I think if you look at the, the three test matches individually, I think there are definitely things that, of course, we needed to get better. And, um, you know, you look at today... You know, I was really proud of the team in, t in terms of the way that they fronted up physically and it's such a, you know, Test Match Rugby is a game of really fine margins and I think we created a lot of opportunities against the world-class team, the back-to-back -back world champions for a reason, but, you know, you speak to those guys, I just was in the change room then and they were saying, you know, they, they felt really under pressure there, they felt the physicality of the game and I think that's a sign of a good team. Um, what we need to do is make sure we find the fixes to, to closing out those games and I have every confidence and belief in the players and the staff that you know we are we will do everything that we possibly can to be a significantly better team come next week but also looking ahead to the Six Nations. You went off around about 50 minutes again is that frustrating that you can't help in those closing stages and does it leave a leadership void? It certainly doesn't leave a leadership void I, I have 
we are we have leaders all the way across the field. I think you look at the the team that was on at the end. There was plenty of leaders in that team, and um, you know I think every player. If you speak to every player, they would always want to play every moment of every game. But you know the the hooker jersey is an 80 minute performance across two players, and I think when you've got the likes of Luke Cowan-Dickey or Theo Dan coming off the bench, then you know the the things that they can add. And I think you saw that with Luke tonight. Okay, we're gonna have one from you, James. Then to you, Alfie. Steve, I'm sure we've all shown your frustrations and sympathised greatly. Um, with Japan and the Six Nations coming up, are you in a position where it's so close that you're going to continue exactly on the trajectory that the first one you've got? Or is there a little bit of fine tweaking, a bit of pruning that's got to take place to really get this team into a position where they're killing off these big games? Well, I think there is always those those changes that you need to continually develop. I think what's important is that the core of the game, I think if you look at this, the core of the game is putting us in a position to to be ahead on the scoreboard against very, very good opposition. And um, we will improve to ensure that we, we do finish off those games. But it's something that the central elements of our game are, are good and are able to compete with the very best around. Just before you start, you just make sure we remain seated during the press conference. Yeah, Alfie. Uh, Steve, from your point of view, I suppose, particularly in an attacking sense, what changed or what went wrong in the second half for you to only score three points? Yeah, well, I think you have to credit that they're a pretty good team we're playing against. And um, we, so it, was a, it was a very, very tight game for long periods. I think clearly there's, there's some moments there towards the back end of the game where I thought we had opportunities um, that we we didn't quite take, and I want to make sure that the players understand that the backing that I give them consistently to to show their skill set, the 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 backing I give them, that I have absolute confidence in them as players to make the right decisions and their ability to move the ball, even even in the tightest situations, even in the closest of test matches. Um, I believe our players have got very, very good skills. And, and as they get more and more experience at test level, I believe they will take those opportunities. And results aside, are you happy with how the team's developing or have you taken some backward steps this autumn? I think that um, clearly we want wins and we're all... We're all really, really disappointed that we haven't got those those wins so far this autumn. We've one more game next week that um, we want to make sure we get the performance and the result that we've all been working towards. Clearly, we're playing against very, very good teams, and there are what well, there are big positives to take from it. We, from it, we are there are also big learning days. Big, you know, these are painful experiences right now. Uh, we're going through them. I think this adversity will ultimately be good for the team long term. Um, it's just very, very difficult right now. And Jamie, on that criticism, do you embrace it or protect the team from it as you build into the Japan game? No, look, I think, <clears throat> again, we are as frustrated as everyone else. Um, I think it's important for us as players to take responsibility over the last three performances. I think when you look at it, you look at, the positions that we put ourselves in across all three games and tonight, you know, in terms of the plan that's being put out there, you know, that when we play to the plan, I think we are a very, very dangerous team. I think when we stray away from that, we allow teams opportunities. And I think that's exactly what happened this evening. Um, so we will be holding our hands up. We will be looking at ourselves and we're making sure that, you know, we find the fixes so that we are, we are ready to go against Japan. And I know you weren't on at this point. I didn't know if you'd had a chance to speak to the team yet. Were there any thoughts to possibly go for the three points kind of towards the end there to cut it down to a one-score game rather than kicking to the corner? Uh, I haven't spoken to Mara about it, but I absolutely back his decision. Um, I think we just needed to be more clinical again. We had a really good line-out play to, that we could have taken an opportunity to close out the game and we didn't execute it, so... Again, that's on us to, to make sure that we're able to do that. OK, we're going to have last two. So we're going to go Alex, then Nick, then we're done. Steve, the last, the last 20 minutes, a lot of ball and obviously a man advantage. The, the accuracy seemed to go at that point. Is there a reason? You know, do you think there's a reason for that? Is there an overriding issue there? Yeah, I think that first I'll also say that they're, they're, they're a very good team we're playing against. Who, and when you have that level of experience and understand what, you, what you've got to do in those circumstances when you're playing a man down and their line speed went up, um, 
their attack at the breakdown went up and they caused some of those errors. I think the other opportunity was, I think there was some opp- some moments where we could have moved the ball a little bit wider and we didn't, we attacked a little bit narrower. Again, uh, I have a good discussion with the players about why we made those decisions. Nick? Steve, over the summer you lost a lot of you know, two world class coaches. Ali, who was a very positive voice in the environment, and Felix, who seemed to be on the right track with the defence, and, and now you've also got Kev, who's not in camp all the time. Is that having, how, how much of an impact? How much of a factor is that behind, behind um, that? I'm very confident with the, the whole management team that you have, coaching and full management team. You have. Ultimately, we're, we're getting in positions to win the games, which says that the, there's a lot of things being done really, really well. Now, clearly, we're going against teams like today, the, the level of experience they have, they have um, and the level of experience they've seen those games out. Now, as I say, these, these games, it's tough right now you know it's 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 painful but we will we will work through it and it, we will be a better team because of these painful experiences now